Test, 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 test. This is Flash at the Dork Table doing a solo today. I've got my bars a moving, so I assume I'm on the air. And thanks, Grim. I give Grim a check. You know, had him give him a call about making sure my meters were going to work and the stuff was going to all work. That's about how I know about it. Anyway, thanks, Grim. <clears throat> I was a little kind of un unexpected to be on the dork table on Saturday. Totally dorkless. All my dorks are out doing important things with uh, the rest of the world. So anyway, here we go. Say hi to the people in the reallibertymedia.com chat. Hey, Barman, Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Asmo, Chalcedini, Echelon, Free Enslaved, I be Don C, I be Don C, Java Doctor 2, J Dread, Ponder Gander, Kate, oh, that's Miss Kate, how come you're not up at the top, threw me off, Rob Works, Trust Number 1, Vanna White, Vinny Speak, Weather Dork, Woodman, Z, Beth, Z, Phantom Circle, she's not on, she's just hanging around the house, Ugh, mental dork cakes is here. D dork cakes. Me frumped frumpy gooberzilla gramit. Jays nines jays. Carl underscore marks the wacky bot. Kiss mm, sock puppet and Vanna White. And that's the lineup for bots and bodies to entertain your mind. Uh, I'm hitting all the right buttons for a change. I don't usually do that. Mm. Grimner says you're good flash or you were then you weren't then you were yeah I had a, a little mishap in the beginning but I don't know you can s let it go it's just a radio podcast it's not the beginning or the end of anything I just do this because well I think I have opinions about things you know this isn't about all my vast wealth of knowledge you know I'm passing it on to all the small people out there in the real world because the truth is, the, most of the stuff that I've learned over my lifetime, and of course the really good shit off the internet in the last few years, uh, since about 11 I would say, where I could prove the things that people told me in the, in the 80s. Because I thought they were crazy when I first started it all. I went, whoa. But what they were explaining to me, it really did make sense. So, But not to everybody. I found a use for their knowledge. Mm. Now, that's what I call education. All this crap they do with schools and lining you up in a little row and set your chair in order. and that How do you learn anything like that? That's how you take directions. And, you know, on the dork table, the dorks, well, they don't really take direction. They're, it's, I think Mary compar compares uh, dorks to herding cats. Because, you know, cats don't listen to shit. They do exactly what they want, when they want, how they want. And if anybody has the, I guess, the time and the patience to actually train a cat, wow, that's one patient person. Because, you know, cats are sneaky and they're silent and they're stealthy and they hide and stare at you from faraway places <laughs> and watch everything you do. And that's... I think that's more like me than the dog. You know, the dog dog people are kind of happy and go lucky, and cat people are, I don't know, a little bit withdrawn, you know, from the average Joe world out there in the whatever. Cat people are pretty much known for wanting their solitude. And, you know, cats don't, well, some cats run in, in packs too. I don't know what you call them, dens. They got like lion dens and shit like that. But the smaller cats, they still do that shit. They pack. I wouldn't want to run into a pack of wild cats out there in the wilderness looking for a meal. Because it probably be me that they decided to munch them just a little bit. Probably close to their size. Um, <laughs> I'm not much bigger than a, a big cat. But let me see. I was doing 20% uh, off. Solo. So I'm getting used to this solo thing, but uh, what it does do is it, I just start talking about shit and see what happens. And uh, I listened back to the 20% show and uh, wow, 
I was kind of sounding sarcastic about identifying uh, the voters for the people that don't vote. There should be some way to identify them. And then be able to publicly shame them for what their leaders do. And make it clear and known that, hey, just because they're elected, I didn't want them in there. <laughs> but, but the way that people are, are getting along on the Internet is, it's what's the right term for this? Uh, embarrassing, I think. Uh, the leaders all run around acting like a bunch of 15-year-old kids in a school, passing notes and calling this kid of that and that kid's of this. and Oh, this kid's stupid because this kid believes so-and-so. And at some point in life, I would have expected for the you know, the collective, to collectively grow out of that kind of crap, but I don't think we do. Somehow or another, the game is rigged so that whatever we do, however we behave, is exactly what the system wants us to do. But what they write about in, you know, press releases and newspaper and movies and all this drama, and um, they call it information. It's just to... Uh, show you what the guidelines are of what you can do and I think I thought that because they made murder an entertainment so source with film and you know in the beginning it was obviously over the top and it was very ridiculous and then they did the slasher films and most of that stuff was just it wasn't realistic it was more slapstick with a little bit of scary thrown into it and then as the years rolled on people got bored of just doing slapstick and they started to make it look pretty damn real and what they didn't make look real the message behind the movie was I like this Star Wars thing I don't know fuck all about Star Wars never saw it everybody I've ever known I think I don't know if Cirque saw it I think she has but most of the I can't think of anybody I met that wasn't surprised when the topic of Star Wars come up, now I'm, I've never seen it. What? What? <laughs> you didn't see? St what? Do you live in a cave? Well, no. The the thing with me is, if anything's that popular, I usually I don't have too much interest. But like the Hitchhiker's Guide, that came out in paperback. That was a book once, and <laughs> in the '80s, a friend of mine had a real. A real cheap computer, I think it was 87 or 88, and on that computer was this um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy game, but you had to type to play it. It was real frustrating. Whoops, I paused myself there. Don't know where I left off, so I'll start something new. <laughs> oh, man, this has just not been my, my morning to uh, start off a dork table, except that I'm doing everything like a fucking dork. Uh, so if you're listening out there and you got patience, let the show play. I might say something that is funny before the show's over. Uh, yeah, it's still a book. I realize that, but people don't read like they once did when there wasn't so much uh, opportunity to avoid reading. Uh, I I enjoyed reading. I was the weirdo that liked to read books. And uh, all my peers made fun of it. Uh, up to my 30s, 40s, I would go into a bar. And if I ever had a book in a redneck bar, some redneck would raise hell about me having a book <laughs> the last time. Uh, I had just got this, I've told this before, but I just got this Rolling Stones book. And it was pretty good size. It had a lot of pictures and a lot of text. It was real exciting. I was going to read this. So I'm waiting for my friend to come pick me up from the bar. And I figured, well, I just crack my book while I'm waiting. And the guy next to me stands real tall and proud and yells, There's time and a place to read a book. This ain't it. <laughs> 
<laughs> what are you going to do? Take my book away from me, you big bully. <laughs> Louder, please, says Dork Cakes. Yeah, I'm having trouble with my uh, with my equipment. I am upgrading in the not-so-distant future. So I'm setting up something with Cirque so that I can get some equipment that will be more consistent and work a little bit better. Because my Hardcore 12 turned into a Hardcore 20. And I'm amazed that I've done this for so long and people still check out what the hell I think about whatever the hell I think about. And <laughs> I've turned up the volume as, what? let me see, I don't think I can turn it up anymore. It says I'm up to 100% on my, uh, let me, let me try bending my mic into my face. I think my headphones are dying is what it is. Oy, but they still work. They make all the meters read properly, but hmm, it's just not comfortable. So, hmm, let me, is this loud enough, Mr. Cakes? Because uh, me and Cakes are friends. We, we chitter-chatter on other sites. We know each other from here and there and the other place. Ran into him just the other morning on minds.com, come to think of it. And the only bad thing about it is... Uh, I'm usually available when Cirque's at work. And then when Cirque's home, I get on a little bit. But I'm an early bed guy. I don't stay up late night no more. I've given up all my wild ways. And now, you know, I'm an old guy that smokes a little pot and plays a little bit on the internet with a few hobbies here and there. I do little things. But no excitement to my life outside of my wife. You know, that's it. And, uh... When I was younger, I thought, holy fuck, when you get married, life's done. You're finished. And I blame that on the the way that I was raised by the system that raised me. My parents didn't really have a whole lot to say after I hit school. Then it was all different. I don't know. It was always a matter of, these people want you to do this. Stop being a problem and do what they want. <laughs> And when I'd ask why, you know, what is the point of all this? Well, that way when you grow up, you can have a job and be a, you know, permanent member of society. And I don't know, I think I always had that itch to travel since I was just a wee kid because my father and my mom always took us places. Uh, traveled to you know, California, not far away lands and all that, but. It set me up for what what I was going to do in the later years of my days. Because I don't know how to put somebody else in my position. You know, I was um, obligated to do something to a point, but it wasn't necessary. And then I met somebody and I just decided to go fucking fly 1,400 miles to go meet them. <laughs> well... I think those are decisions that are easily made. Not, It's not like you either you do or you don't. So if you want to do something, then you do it. Oh, the men are talking about Bitcoin. So stand down, femme fatales. The men have got the... <laughs> they're talking all that uh, Bitcoin jazz. But anyway, I, it crosses my mind sometimes to... Uh, to see what I've done through your eyes would be so much different than to see what I've done through mine. Because, of course, you're looking th with your own personal experience and your lifestyle. and All these things taint your outlook. I've noticed that because as I've traveled, I've looked for the similarities instead of, you know, what makes all, us all different. And, oh, you're in that tribe. And, oh, I belong to this country. And, Fuck all that shit. It's just a lot of crap. And it, it's a lot of crap to keep us divided so that when you meet a stranger, it's a, whoop, hey, you're a stranger, stop, search him, <laughs> you know, check this fucker out, he could be here to hurt us. And that's the other side of life that I'm familiar with it, but I don't like to live in it. Um, you can get a haircut and you can get a real job. But if that's what makes you happy, that's kind of weird to me. Um, all that control from other people. Oh, you don't look, you know, oh, you're, you don't dress this way. And oh, you're, you're that. And your hair's to this. And you're, everything's a freaking complaint from who? 
I don't I don't associate anymore. It's been years, years and years since I've been around anybody willingly that wanted to put a big judgment on the way I appeared or what I talked about, shit like that. Fuck it. You don't like it, then leave me alone. I won't I won't follow you home and force you to be my friend. I mean <laughs> that's kind of stupid. <laughs> Besides, I got Cirque. So hmm. the balance of life is uh, it's easy to attain if you I guess if you know what you want maybe that's what it is hmm. could it be that when people look at stuff they don't really understand that they want it maybe they just look at it and think you know oh that would be a nice dream someday hey you, you only got one life why waste it dreaming about oh I want to do this and oh I want to do that oh well of course there's legal games that are played to make the doing all this kind of stuff a little easier on a person. I mean, because I read about all this illegal aliens all over the fucking world doing this and doing that. And I'm starting to figure out that it's the people that are undocument, undocumented that have the uh, upper hand with the system because the system doesn't know who the fuck they are. There's no record of their birth. There's no fucking... They're taken 8,000 miles away from where they were from. And they don't have all this modern day technology where these third world countries were were once flourishing. I think they bombed the fuck out of everything they could they could to destroy the evidence. So if somebody came along and say, "Hey, I'm so and so from this country," prove it. What? I don't have. I can't prove it because everything was destroyed in the war. And we don't we don't run into people in Denmark that have stories like that. But there's plenty of them to be found on the internet. Every uh, every side of life is covered. I'm particularly fond of Minds. Minds.com. It's small. They're still, they're like a Facebook wannabe in a lot of ways. I don't, I don't trust people that want to grow that big and you know make a, a big deal in the fucking world. There's like uh, a lot less people speaking and, and reading English on this planet than there are other languages and I know uh, but lots of people speak English yeah well I wonder out of the ones that can how many of them spend their time with doing that first because my wife the first thing in the morning she opens up her computer and even though she opens up the real liberty media.com to say good morning and you know to the friends on the online she opens up her newspaper every fucking day so Danish is her first language, so she's reading a Danish newspaper in Danish first thing in the morning. Then I was thinking about this today. When I communicate with Cirque, she has to hear it in English and translate it into Danish because her first language is Danish. And this shit happens like blink, boom, boom, boom. And then there's certain words that kind of jack her up <laughs> and it slows the process down and she's not sure what exactly are you talking about because there's certain words in English that they don't have in Danish well I learned all that valuable knowledge without having to learn the language to get along with people and I would say that a lot of that is because of the internet the internet is it forces people to do things that they can't do in only one language. You need English to use the internet. So it's pays off for me. All these kids and they're they don't use it a lot. So when I when I hear them and they speak good English, I'll let them know, hey, that sounds real good because if I try to tell you in Danish, you'd still be trying to figure out what I wanted. <laughs> and uh, they know that, but they're like uh, self conscious about their accent. I think so. People. You know, we're all like that. When I try to speak Danish, there's no accent to it. I'm just saying Danish words in a English with an English dialect, and it doesn't work because their sounds are different than ours. <laughs> ours, <laughs> us, <laughs> us, uh, English speak and minority of the fucking planet Earth. You know, and people don't know in America, I don't think, or England, that uh, they're the minority. 
they're finding out because, well, the government's playing, hey, move the refugees around right now. And, and they're rewriting the paperwork so you can't fucking stop it. This is the future. They're not asking you. <laughs> These fuckers are telling you what they're going to do. And they've ruined and they've left a, a wake of shit behind them for, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. But I wasn't around to see the original shit, so I just tend to judge it by the time I came in, the time I've seen, and I'm going out of this life. But I'm not going to be all concerned about, well, Hannibal crossed the fucking mountains and uh, da, 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 attacked so-and-so. Yeah, well, I wasn't there, so what? What In the long run, see, all this, all this war shit does for the small guy that, A, wasn't in any of these fucking wars. And B, didn't make any money off these fucking wars. It just gives him something to talk about. And to certain people, that actually looks knowledgeable and important. Yeah, Vinny has, what? Has a Facebook page on RLM. Oh, Vinny. I thought he was at a, uh, I thought he went to a concert today. I guess maybe he did. I'm reading the chat and trying to make up something to talk about. and Be intelligent and entertaining at the same time but <laughs> it's a torque table so suffer <laughs> nah not really i'm fooling around with dumb words but the other night i was going off on how the the federal government plays dumb to the public in ways that we rlm people some of us not all of us but some of us are really clear on looking at that <laughs> And saying, you know, instead of lying and saying, hey, you know what, we're a fucking pack of liars and we do everything we can to make a dollar off of you so that we don't have to work. Well, <laughs> new, new studies indicate the miracle of cannabis. Okay, my question would be, where was that miracle in 19, what was it, 36? <laughs> when people were swearing in freaking court that, Ass slinger guy. I smoked marijuana, turned me into a bat. Now what? <laughs> so, well, I don't know. I don't see any great changes have come from legalizing it either. All, all I see is businesses are making a profit from it. And then, of course, here we are in this Federal Reserve Bank thing. So people don't really want to face the, You're not earning anything. These are promissory notes that we're dealing in. <laughs> cash, there's no such thing as cash. Cash is, it's owned by the people that print it. And they let you use it. And if you don't read the, the fine prints of the, like, money, uh, modern money mechanics explains a lot of it. It details the uh, fractional reserve banking practices. And I'm telling you, man, if I tried to do that to people, they'd hang me on a freaking tree at the end of a rope and probably beat me to death instead of hanging me just to, because that is that evil to do that. And I don't use that word very often. But there's not too many words that describe the deceit and the freaking just the dishonesty of the commerce system, how it works, how they do it to us. And then they trick us into complying. And then there's no there's no questionnaire to fill out. Oh, gee, do you want to do this? Would you like to live off on the on you know on a mountaintop with, with Bugs Bunny, or would you like to be a part of this fucked up society that does everything the opposite of the way it explains it to you? You know, like my big pet peeve with fluoride. <laughs> oh, inoculations, the usual the usual uh, suspects. The food, <laughs> good lord! And I've noticed over the last six or eight year, months, uh, years, months about uh, GMOs were a big topic for a bit. People were all concerned. Then robots came to the front. You know, sex bots. We're gonna be able to fuck robots. Yay! And uh, GMOs stopped being a topic. Then it was now it's climate change. <laughs> so it's like the uh, whoever moves the the pieces around on the board it's not us you know <laughs> so the things that interest the common guy i don't think we, he would want to be here for 10 minutes why would the common guy want to talk about how fucked up his system truly is 
and face that, there's really nothing we can do about it. We're, we're beyond fixing. Well, nobody's going to get together ever and revolt against this crap. They're just going to keep voting for a new guy to change it. Oh, this new fella, he's going to come in and he's going to fix everything. Oh, <laughs> I saw a link about Trump. Uh, this guy puts it up. It's on a, I put it on my page on Minds.com. And it's about uh, Trump and all his big doodah about making America great again and only USA products and all that shit. So this guy went and stayed at his hotel. I forget if it's the one in Vegas or New York or both. Hold on. And he, uh, he did a visual inventory. And he reported verbally. He didn't show like labels on the on the stuff till the end. But uh, <laughs> the toaster, the coffee pot, and this expensive freaking room, right? I mean, it's really nice looking room, expensive looking, and all that. And all the shit in it's made in China, overseas, somewhere. Um, the the clothing that Trump sells in his uh, shop, all that Trump hats and. Trump golf wear and Trump shirts made in China. I think one of them was made in, uh, well, somewhere other than China, but it was still an Eastern Asian Europe uh, property, not Europe, but Eastern Asian country. See, I don't talk and think in country very much, so when I try to, I fuck it really bad. (laughs) Anyway, I thought that was kind of uh, hmm, hypocritical. You know, because that's what I'm, I tell people. You know, this guy that they've put him in the presidency. I mean, it was obvious the way that it worked. And it, and then to set Hillary up to be, be and look like a big ass. No, that was the electoral college doing what an electoral college does. They pick the freaking president. You don't. You think you pick. You don't pick shit. What does a loser say? Oh, well, there was two choices by God. How come it wasn't my choice? There's your there's your voting right there. Not, hey, what's going on here? And then if you do ever do dare to question the, the narrative that the, the system's spewing at you, then they call you names. Oh, you won't take the official record. What are you, some kind of anarchist? <laughs> mm. Mm. I think it's... It's Grimner, if I'm quoting him right, that he thinks that the anarchism is what's happening now, but they call it, you know, Republican. No, 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 no. What they're doing is actually anarchy. There's the illusion of rule, the rule of law, please. Supreme Court, I mean, please, this is so beyond fucking real that I can't find the time to be bothered, you know, to... uh feel any of it it's just words bouncing off the you know the walls hitting me and they don't really have a meaning there's hmm, i guess it sounds kind of crazy but i mean i know it's there but it's out of sight out of mind i don't run into other americans unless i do the internet and the people that uh i pass in the street i always tell you guys about the the crowd down at the train and there's a group of I suppose that, you know, the working class would consider them derelicts, you know, because they hang out outside the main train station and drink right in front of everybody. And occasionally one of them will, you know, light up a spliff and they don't hide it or these people are beyond all that. Uh, I seen a couple of kids a few weeks ago sitting on the sitting down and I could tell the kid was rolling by the way he was sitting, what he was doing with his hands. You don't do these things unless you're doing that. So, but we're you know we're in such a calm, easy going kind of place that if all you're gonna do is roll a spliff and smoke it, and that's the end of that, what's the big deal? So the the people here have evolved beyond uh, prohibition. But what's legal is legal. They still play the game like at the bar. We have these. Uh, I guess they're kind of like. They get calls in. Well, we're going to be inspecting. Or somebody tells them, this is the time you're to in- expect the, uh, the local inspectors. And whoever watches whatever they watch to judge all that tells them ahead of time. So there are times you have to go into the pool room to smoke in the building. And uh, they do that during the day when they're serving food to you know appease the, the people that come in there to eat. 
But, it, you know, chances are if you're going to a bar to have a meal, well, you're probably going to have a beer or drink or wine or something with it. And smoking kind of goes with all that in the first place. Still over here in Denmark, there's still a, a lot of those older people. Not necessarily those youngins. A lot of the youngins have those fancy pipes. Seen that. And I don't know. I'm not too interested. I tried a, tried it a couple, ten years ago, eight years ago, something like that. And I, I kept the stuff, but I didn't like using it. I still like fire and weed, and fire and tobacco. That's may not be natural to somebody that doesn't use it, but my natural is not your natural. I think uh, different people can survive a lot of different shit. Like that couple I was reading about that ate the raw marmot and died because it was diseased. What if that's not true? What if that is all just bullshit? Maybe they had a... Maybe they ate something that made them sick, and the people that took, that run all this shit, took advantage of it to make it seem the way they want to, so that they could bring what they want to into the argument. Oh, now we got bubonic plague, blah, blah, that kind of thing. Keeping the public in constant fear. And I was reading about it, and they said, well, the fleas come off the rats. All right, I lived in New York City when there was like, people god maybe the 80s it was worse but i read in the 70s the rats outnumbered the people population uh it was either seven or eight to one well where's the bubonic plague through that now with all those fucking rats in new york city not one flea managed to get on a cat or a dog and get somebody on the 80th floor and give them freaking you know bubonic plague why not Mm -hmm. so I think what I'm trying to get to is that my ignorance of certain details and my school education, what they did teach me, and then all this crap with the inoculations to confuse the common sense of somebody so that they'll accept that because if you understand what an inoculation is, you wouldn't want one. It's ridiculous. I'm going to give you the disease because why? You could catch the disease. Let's not wait for your body to make up an immunity when you get it. Let's get you sick now. So when you take a a healthy human and you make them sick on purpose, what kind of results are you fucking expecting in the first place? But try arguing with somebody that's all about, oh, the inoculations are good and they work. Fuck what's in the damn thing in the first place. Put that aside. Hand that son of a bitch a bag of heroin and a fucking point and tell him, hey, why don't you sit down and show me how needles are okay. Because, see, the, hypoc- the hypocrisy of the society is they get you to fear the fucking thing. And then when uh, they want to use that weapon on you as a direct tool to control you somehow. <laughs> That's what I see. Have you ever seen a five-year-old not scream bloody murder when the doctor's going to go near him with a needle? and Or the... Parents are so strict, they tell the kid, hey, you behave or you'll get twice what this needle is going to give you. So the kid takes the shot. But they're never willing. Why not? And it's universal. Kids don't line up and go, oh, goody, we get to get shots today. Think about that. I have. I was a kid once. And I grew up in that period of time where there wasn't any mandatory shit like that. If you didn't want it, you didn't get it. You might have religious or whatever reasons for not doing it, the school system in those years didn't fuck with you about it. You know, if you were a a a club-footed lesbian um, Jew and you didn't want a shot, that was enough for anybody. I ain't going to argue with that. (laughs) A club-footed lesbian Jew. There's probably a group of them out there, though. You think? Yeah, you know what I saw in the uh, interwebs yesterday? People post pictures of other people to make fun of the people. And somehow, I'm just trying to figure out how that's, um, how is that educating anybody? Or is that entertaining? Because the older I get, I love a good fucking joke. And I don't mind, like, me and Vinny talk shit to each other and when I marry people I know. But uh, when when there's, you know, strangers, is that the way you want to be to people? 
I think I got the idea from uh, listening to Vinny yesterday. I was getting all frustrated because I know, I know the Bundy story. I know what what uh, he's trying to do, but I told him that like two nights before that, that right now it, it's not a big deal right now. People don't give a shit right now. And they should, but they they don't. They're they're overwhelmed with everything else. And here you are, and you've got this point you're making. Well, yeah, but you're making it to the same group, so you have to diversify your point just a tad. I get repetitious about certain topics, so what I try to do is work something else into the conversation I'm having with myself here, and maybe say something that's worth hearing over the you know over the the podcast. You never know, and I'm not trying to help anybody or save anyone. I'm just saying this is this is the way that I see a life. Uh, and I've had 59 years here, so I've learned a thing or two, but how many of the things have I learned that I can give to somebody else and they're actually applicable? I'm not really sure about that. Uh, lifestyles being what they are, I don't think the, there's a lot of people that have the wherewithal about them to, uh, to trust life. Here we go. This is a, the religious people piss me off because they preach all this, all this shit about the afterlife and uh, later. Well, what about now? You know, what what are you doing today? I'm trying to have fun myself. I'm a hedonist by nature, I think. So whatever I do, I try to enjoy what I'm doing it and do it well. You know, like today, I wanted to get out into the yard and, and relieve Cirque of the uh, moment. We got it's not even hard. It's just a little electric mower, but it's a pretty good size yard. But I got out there and once I start, it's not like work. Um once I do a physical action, I just got to get myself motivated to do it. Now being alone is is not the finest position to be in to do that. So when Cirque's around, it's a little more I think it's a little easier to to be motivated to do something for her when she's here to see it than it is to do it when she's not here and then, you know, come in late at night and go to bed and all that. You don't see the you don't see the results of, oh, look at all this shit I did, blah, 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 blah. And I'm not a very big detail guy. I have such bad eyesight that <laughs> you pretty much have to point shit out to me or I miss it. <laughs> oh, there went my dog on some kind of alert. She has a big bone out in the yard now. Cirque bought her this bone about the size of my forearm, but it's a thick at the, at the ends. Anyway, she's got that bone out there, so uh, when anything approaches that bone except Cirque, the dog gets all defensive and, hey, you can't take my bone. <laughs> yeah, kind of like being on a chat room. You know, hey, you can't say that in here, you moron. Well, Grim said I could say that if I want to. You don't have to read it. <laughs> We've been playing that game for fucking years now. How many years does this go on before people learn to behave? I think is the correct term because I see the antagonizing. You know, I poke hands on purpose. I do it because, well, he's not a very nice man. So I justify my piss poor behavior by that instead of just avoiding it, you know, and, and for years I've been wanting to avoid it, but uh, <laughs> I don't do a lot of uh, electronic social where I, I get to play with somebody that's so much fun, <laughs> makes me laugh, it, it, it tickles my sick side, you know, and we all have one, some people are really well in control of not letting that dark side of them out to mingle with the crowd. You know, like Rob's sarcastic. Vinny is like super honest. And don't ask Vinny what color his socks are. <laughs> he'll tell you. Uh, geez, if you got a camera, he'll probably show them to you. So, hmm. and what I mean is that we all personally take, like certain people have uh, personality traits that are, you read them on the screen. So you make your own mind up about you not only are what you're reading about, but what the person that's writing it is like. And some people, boy, my, my goodness, you're having a hard time out there in the real world. And uh, I separate the real world from my physical world. You know, it's not, they're not together. They are not, they're not connected. Uh, but 
they can be stuffed down your fucking throat by a system of greedy thieves. So, it's all a matter of how you interpret the information. So, what the system's done to me is give me as little information as they possibly could without telling me anything more than, we expect you to do this. This is legal. Well, I'm one of those weirdos to, uh, that from early age didn't give two fucks about what was legal or illegal. I cared about what I was going to do, you know. So, growing up, I wasn't a bully big kid and all that. I was a small guy, so fighting in trouble, you know, like bad trouble were not my thing. Mischief and chaos and having fun, uh, doing things that other people didn't think of doing. And I'm going to get to that in a second. And one of them, and it, and it really disturbs me to this day because I was in school when I did this. We had a, I must have been about 12 or 13, I think. We had a wood shop. And part of the curriculum was, it was called an elective. You could take this so you could learn how to use the saws and all the wood shop tools and whatnot. They had a teacher. And this guy was a freaking idiot. He spent the entire class time doing his doing an imperson, impersonation of uh, W.C. Fields. That's how he spoke to people in a in that character. <laughs> it was so fucking annoying. And his name was Mr. Hasbro. So uh, anyway, what I did was I did the job that they we had some kind of a like a template for a it was a dolphin or some kind of fish it was a, about a foot long or so so i did mine and came out pretty good then what i did was after i finished that i went off and i took off one of my closet doors off my off of my room and i i drew a three foot tall like a redneck character with a paunch belly and huge gigantic feet and, and a short hair that was sticking every which way and then I cut it out on the on the jigsaw at school. So I, I drug this damn piece of door. <laughs> I got it out of the house without my folks noticing or hearing it. <laughs> it was weird. And I come home with this character I named. It was really dumb, but I named the character. And it was really well done. And then I painted it. So you saw a, a cutout in wood of this character. And school didn't even... Nothing. Not a remark, not a, this is good, not you should pursue this. What they did say was, you're not doing what we told you to do. <laughs> so, from, you know, riding me in 12, 13 years old, these people are already slapping me in the face when I would try to show them, I don't need you, I, I can do this act alone. <laughs> Just move aside, I know how to use tools now, now step step over there and let me at it. That's not how they played. They never played that way. And I figured if they didn't play it there, uh, the next year I was supposed to, well, it's going to sound braggy, but they were trying to get me to go to Whittier College, take an entrance exam. When I would turn 14 or something, I was going to be old enough to do this by the state law. And when I realized about hey, man, I can't even get get these people to notice this piece of artwork I did without getting bitched at. I started to think, nah, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to be an educated fucking know-it-all. No, 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 no. Now, to some of my family, that was a huge mistake on my part. And, oh, you know, my mom, for years and years, Gandalf hat, huh? <laughs> I had ass hat. Uh, interruption from the reading the chat. Uh, but anyway... See, it sounds all like uh, kind of braggy, but uh, I believe that we're all like cut short on what our capabilities are. They don't put any attention on what you perform well at. They put all the fucking attention in school and what you suck at and try to fix a broken wheel. You know, it's broken. It doesn't work. Do something that you do well. Don't don't waste a whole shitload of your fucking time trying to force yourself to do something that, one, you're not interested in because you can't do it. And that, I think that's the core of shit. The guy that can't change a car tire, he doesn't want to change a car tire. Fuck that. There's other people that'll do that for money. 
why do I need to learn how to change a car or tire? And <laughs> we live in a really cold world, and things changed. And sometimes when you, uh, when you get yourself in a position where you need a tire changed and you don't know how to do it yourself, hmm. I've seen movies where fellas come along and take advantage of you and steal all your shit and leave you there with your flat tire, naked, standing on the outside of your car because they locked you out of it when they left. Um, I've heard horror stories through my life about horrible things people did to each other for fun and amusement and finance. Now, fortunately, I've seen a very, very minimal amount of crap from other people. I've been spared a lot of shit, probably because I'm so small. <laughs> Uh, I'm not like a target in public. I I just blend in, and even with the hair, eh, people don't bother with me. Okay, simmer down. It was a joke, says Grimnir. Ah, him and Woody are going off on all kinds of weird stuff on the RealLibertyMedia.com chat. You know, that's where the guys know everybody, and gals. And we we're pretty familiar with each other. But if you want to come down there and you know, pick on someone. <laughs> Come on down. Pick on me. I, I kind of enjoy it. Not always. Sometimes I get a little pissy, but I think that's just a matter of interpretation. Because whatever Rob writes to me, I don't give two fucks. What Rob writes to me doesn't mean shit. Go figure. I get along with Rob just fine, whether he tells me to go fuck myself or not. And the, But the thing is, with Rob, I don't think Rob means it. Other people... Vinny, <laughs> I think Vinny takes some of the stuff too serious, you know, and he's, he gets, he gets the joke here, but then some jokes go beyond him, like he's done with me, he'll say something, and it, right by me, whatever reason, we don't connect on that particular level, so what I've done is, I've just learned to uh, ask him privately, you know, aside from everybody else, hey, what the fuck's going on here, so I think I'm gonna try to pass that on as a you know, if you have a problem with somebody, there should be, like, there's private chat. You should be going to a private chat and work it out. But we're not going to do that. I know we're not going to do that. I know there's no way in the fucking world I'm going to go into a private chat with Hansel. No way on this, nah, not in this lifetime. So I don't expect anybody else to do it. But it worked with Vincent. Go figure. I think a lot of that's just because Vinny is so you know, pro-honesty that he's willing to look at his end of what went wrong, not just, well, you're a fucking idiot, da-da-da-da-da, that, no, no, no. It takes two people to have a disagreement. So the honesty thing is, you know, what he pushes out whenever he does the radio, it's true, he's right. It's just there's so little of it. <laughs> we don't live in that. We, we live in this freaking debt-based economy and they're spraying us with shit in the sky and they poison every fucking thing that we put in our bodies. So where where do you learn to trust in the first place? You know, And I think what, what happens to some people is if you lose enough, like me, there comes a point where trusting someone else doesn't fucking matter anyway. It, it doesn't. What you feel about what they're going to do in the future will not change the outcome of what they do in the future. So the only control that we have is interaction. You choose, well, I'm going to interact, or B, I'm not. And sometimes you can play like the illusion of interaction by answering a question, but it's not, it's bullshit. And the only person that knows they're telling the fucking truth in the first place is the person telling the truth. So whoever's l reading what you write or listening to what you say on a podcast, wow, that's up to them to believe the crazy crap that's coming out of your pie hole. Because you got to remember, they're, they're hearing it from innocent ears oftentimes. A lot of people don't experience all the crazy, wacky shit like uh, me and Vinny have. For, uh, I use Vinny as an example because me and Vinny know each other pretty well. And we've been in, in a little bit of trouble with the states, you know, the uh, powers that be. Um, and we've both tried to stay out of the mainstream of the system, but use it for benefit. 
And wow, there's so many people that are illegal that do that. <laughs> they made using the system a bad thing. Well, wait a minute. When I was uh, younger, the system was like the back door. You know, if anything ever goes wrong and you can't survive in the world, then you got the government to back you up so you don't have to live in the street. Well, now living in the street where I'm from <laughs> is a mainstay. They People do that everywhere. I, wow. I did it by choice, not because I had to. I just didn't give a fuck. Sometimes I'd just be too tired to hitchhike and... I'd go find me a pine tree or a bridge or something and go go to sleep for a couple hours, but uh, keep going. And but what we what we've got now is this accumulation of cast outs by society, basically. The people that are not fit to live, um, um, <laughs> my dog, to live amongst the general population, you know, inside with plumbing and electric. You know, they don't have enough money to pay for those things because they're so fucking expensive now. So they're cast out. And what do you do? You put them on the street. And after you've put people on the street, where else can you put them? They're, that's as far as you can go without actually locking them up or killing them. And if they kill them any faster than they've been, <laughs> and they're doing about, what, a 1,000 a year so far, Grim? I think Grim's got a probably got a a better grip on what the numbers would be than me i don't i don't follow it very closely i i'm very aware because you know rob and grim and others put up links that i do open and the stuff that i see whoa even right now as i read the chat you know uh cyborg noodle just posted that sock puppet Police dash cam video of Florida driver driver cited for I eat ass window sticker. Well, freedom of speech. Wow. We, we Yeah, they changed everything with the school. So everybody's a little sweet cake now. Yeah. If you don't if you don't hear what you want to hear, complain about it. Oh fuck. Well, there you go. That's that's what we've become with all this uh regulation and government control and changes in in directions in society be nice to the next guy while you're you know fucking him financially is okay but don't call him a fag <laughs> you know uh, you can have your own freaking business that's yours and it's private it's a private business but if you don't bake a, a cake for a gay couple they can take you to court instead of looking for a, another baker that will and be happy to do it. What do they do? They go pick on somebody that doesn't want to. And they know they don't want to. Well, why pick the guy that doesn't want to? So you can go to this freaking uh, sle sleazy, greedy, scuzzy admiralty court and, you know, sue somebody and get a get a reward for your hard work. Uh, they They can't. You know, they can't tell me no by God. They got to do that for me. Wow. <laughs> See, it puts all the power in the dollar, and it, it takes away all the rights of the people. You know, people have got no right to say no to anything anymore. What are you going to say no to, and to who? If you're told to do something by authority, you better comply, or else I gave you a direct order. What? <laughs> I didn't grow up with that. And when I was in Scotland just a few years ago, when the police did want to speak to me, they knocked on the door. Then after he knocked on the door, he moved off into the yard about 10 feet. He wasn't standing on the door in my face. He was looking for somebody in the neighborhood. And their whole procedure was designed to uh, accommodate the person that's answering the door. So if I hadn't felt like talking to this cop, all I had to tell him was, I don't want to talk to you, I got to go. But I could have put it better words. I was just using that as an example. You know, uh, Anything. I have to go to the bathroom right now. I don't, I don't have time to talk. Oh, okay, sir. Good night. Have a good night. And that's what I got you know, in small community. Went, whoa, what the fuck is going on here? Now, in the 80s, <laughs> the cops were like that in London. In the 90s, the cops weren't like that in London anymore. The beginning of the immigration change really grabbed a good nipple by that point. And, and I remember uh, when I'd left in like 91, I'd been there three times by 96. And I left, I was there in 91. 
I was going to the local pub by my, where my folks lived, and I saw, when I was crossing the street, I saw in the street a kid with his head turned over his shoulder, like talking to his side of his, uh, to somebody beside him, yelling at his mom and sisters behind him, barking at orders like, you know, like they're garbage. And it was, wow, it was not pretty to see that. I felt kind of bad, but they didn't. That, see, that is their way. That's how they do things in a public situation. And people take how you behave in public as being, you're being real. <laughs> no, I'm being a big fraud out in public when I'm nice some of the time if I don't feel like being nice. But where does it pay off to not be nice to somebody? What the fuck is all that about? So on the other hand, what if the guy that's out there being a prick, maybe he's just a scared little boy and he wants to be a big bully because if people found out what he really was, they wouldn't like him. So being as they're not going to like him, let's make sure they don't like you in the first place. <laughs> that's how I see a bully. Some scared little fuck hiding behind loud words and big type and, you know, the government military, the church, oh, I have an education, I have an education in this, and I have an education in that, but I can't explain what the fuck anything is to help myself. <laughs> That's how I see a lot of people. I know it kind of sounds snooty looking down my nose, but, uh, well, you know, if that suit fits you, then I'm talking to you. And if that suit don't fit you, I ain't talking about you at all. I'm just talking to you <laughs> it's the same fucking thing <laughs> we're having fun at the dark table with insult and injury through word and deed hmm. you know because uh, we're getting to the point where hitting somebody with a baseball bat is going to bring you the same fucking legal result as calling them a fag and if they are a fag what are they mad about and if they aren't a fag what are they mad about you said a fucking word but you can't say that anymore you got to, you know, everybody's controlling everything verbally now. <laughs> Boy, if, if you haven't figured out that that's the end, the violence is not the, the violence isn't the result, so to speak. It's the last act. It's a three-step act to uh, what I'm witnessing in society right now. I'm not going to hide behind the big badass. Yes, I fuck I am going to hide behind the big badass government because I can't fight the government. So, I comply to Circle's government and, and they're really kind to me. They this is loose rope. I'm not, you know, I'm not bound to do rituals and learn language. That stuff was optional. I I got lucky. I got you know, I found a place where it doesn't matter. My life is not hindered by not speaking their language. If it had been speaking it shitty or not, I would have learned it if I didn't needed to, if there was no other way. But life brings me to these situations where uh, I get accepted no matter how fucked up I am. <laughs> like on the reallibertymedia.com, you know, uh, some people think I'm a freaking insane person and other people don't, you know. And of course, I play with the ones that do and I like the ones that don't. That's it's an easy choice to make, <laughs> but uh, I don't avoid a whole lot of people. There's a few people on the chat room. I I, I find that I get actually get angry because uh, the uh, the personalities conflict so bad. And the thing with hands is just a bunch of bullshit. That's not real. But with other people that I feel they're not that fucked up. No, 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 no. It's just the, the person, I'm not good with other people. So I've got a long history of this to judge this by. And I just know there's just some people I just need to stay the fuck away from them because I'm going to interpret their their interaction with me badly. So I just avoid it. And I, I found three that I can't do it. You know, and, But that's out of many years of being on RLM. Not many, but if, I've been around for a few years now with Mary and Circle. Because we came over from another site that, well, it was fun, but it didn't work. We had a hole in the boat. <laughs> and the guy that put the hole in the boat was blaming everybody else for putting the hole in the boat. <laughs> and then when it was sinking, he was saying, see what you made the boat do. <laughs> 
And, uh, well, it sank. And then they brought it back. They re, uh, what do you call that when you reincarnate life? You put life where it doesn't belong. And you actually make a monster. <laughs> so it's still out there, kind of, in a way, sort of. But it's um, it's not serving the purpose it served in the time that it took place. And it, World Truth brought a lot of people together. And there's people on Real Liberty Media, anti Huh, huh, huh. Mr. Mental Pancakes that were at the other site that remember what happened. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. So to, to be this far down the road, I, I guess what I'm bitching about is, you know, to be a survivor of all this verbal shit over all these many, many years, it's, it's hard to, to take it all to heart about every individual person, you know. I find a few people I don't get along with and just avoid them. Everybody else is open territory. And there's a lot of shit I read. I read, I read, I read, I read. Don't have anything to say. Just reading their text or reading the, or maybe the, like Cowboy puts up some links in the morning. When he co goes to bed at night, it's my morning. And when Cowboy Tech comes on the RLM and posts a couple things, sometimes I've got interesting links to read on the, on the radio now because of it. And sometimes I just learn a bunch of shit I wasn't sure of before, or it just reinstates my my already given beliefs. You know, I I see it, I see it the same way, and there's somebody I trust putting it up there. So, you know, these little mind games that we play, <laughs> I play these little things. I don't know what everybody else does. I just assume you do. And my wife gave me a link to read, and I'm going to read you guys. I hope you, uh, I haven't read it. So Cirque said, I've got something for you for today on the dork table. And I'm going to read you State Monopoly on Violence. And this is from Political Science and Sociology. Uh-oh, what have I done? I clicked something. Okay. Uh-oh, I thought I had gone all astray, but I was wrong. State Monopoly on Violence in Political Science and Sociology. The concept that the state alone has the right to use or authorize the use of physical force. It is widely regarded as a defining characteristic of the modern state. In his lecture, Politics as a Vocation, 1918, the German sociologist Max Weber. What kind of German name is that? Come on, Weber. That's pretty weak. That On my Nazi scale, that, that's like a four. Back to the story. Max Weber defines the state as a human community that successfully claims the monopoly of the legitimate use of physical force within a given territory. Under feudalism, no lords, including the king, could claim a monopoly over the use of violence since their vassals promised to serve them but remain free to exercise power in their fiefdoms. Moreover, the king and the land nobility had to share power or compete with the Roman Catholic Church. The modern state, according to Weber, emerged by ex expro <laughs> expropriating. Expropriating. What a word. Ay, ay, ay. The means of political organization and domination, including violence and by establishing the legitimacy of its rules. Wow, see, Grim, this is right up your alley. I'm sure glad that you gave this to me, sir. It fits the show. <laughs> As the use of the term legitimate underlines, this concept does not imply that the state is the only actor actually using violence, but rather that is that it is the only actor that I, that can legitimately authorize its use. Wow, that's such bullshit. It was hard to read it because it's true. But my whole fucking life just... I go against this stuff. That's why I don't do uh, the uh, America thing so well. Because people would tell me what to do and i tell them, go fuck yourself. I ain't give a shit. Who the fuck are you to... <laughs> you can't talk to the people like that in public. They get real pissed. So, So what life did for me is rather than teach me how to behave in American society, it put me in a society where I couldn't talk to people. <laughs> wow, the joke's on me. Okay, back to the story. The state can grant another actor to, 
to uh, actor the right to use violence without losing its monopoly as long as it remains the only source of the right to use violence and that it maintains the capacity to enforce this monopoly. Yeah, like they do now. The state monopoly on the legitimate use of violence is also not refuted by the use of legitimate violence. <sighs> okay, criminal organizations may undermine order without being able to challenge the state monopoly and establish themselves as a parallel source of legitimate rule. I'm going to post this, man. This is hard to freaking read. Uh, it's not in my language, you know. So I'm having a little difficulty making passing this off as knowledge i'm just reading the links okay let's see where did i leave off some scholars however diverge from weber and following the tradition set by thomas hobbes instead argue that the ideal of the monopoly of violence concerns not only its control but also its use such that the state is the sole actor that can legitimately wield violence except in case of immediate self-defense and they pretty much did away with all that. Seen from this perspective, the state monopoly on violence can only be jeopardized by phenomena such as the growth of private security companies or organized crime. <laughs> wow. Uh, then there's a bit here, political science. Political science, a systematic study of governance by the application of empirical and generally scientific methods of analysis. As traditionally defined and studied, political science examines the state and its organs and institutions. The contemporary discipline, however, is considerably broader than this, encompass encompassing studies of all the societal, cultural, and state political organization of society, or the body politic, or more narrowly, the institutions of government, the state is a form of human association distinguished from other social groups by its purpose. The establishment of order and security, its methods, the laws, and their enforcement, its territory, the area of feudalism, historiographic construct design designating the social, <laughs> this is hard to fucking read, the social, economic, and political conditions in, the, in Western Europe during the early Middle Ages, the long stretch of time between the 5th and 12th centuries. Wow, this is, wow, Cirque, you're killing me here. Wow. And it's, no, it's all split up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where to find. I'm not going to start shutting shit down. But it's, see, everything we, we just, the way that I read that, I was kind of getting goofy about reading it. But the words, I'm not so much unfamiliar with them. I just don't use them. So when I read something like that, and basically it just defines everything I fucking despise and tells you how it works, wow. Well, the guy that supports it doesn't understand the dynamics of how fucking shit works. They're, look, they're result seekers. They want wars, and they want wealth. They want stuff. And the rest of us that want an answer get left behind. You're a bunch of pussies. You don't want to fight. No, no, we we don't want to fight. Why does that make somebody a pussy if they refuse to beat the shit out of you because you think you're so fucking tough? Or maybe pull a shotgun out and blow you up. It happens. It's so it, you know. It's so common. Movies because oh, movies, 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 movies. You see this thousands of freaking times a year in a film but you don't see in your damn daily life and somehow or another we've managed to flip the real we're living the surreal and real is mocked and and laughed at called names anarchy scum you bums oh you people you don't know what you're doing you just want to fight and kill no 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 that's the <laughs> that's the state doing what the state does what this what this uh, last link proves is that, well, one thing, violence isn't necessary. It's how you control people. That's the whole point. And that's why people get violent. People get violent like uh, me and Vinny. We have words. So we had violent words. If we were in the same room to, with each other, I might have made him mad enough to, to slap me. Because, you know, 
people get hot. They get pissed. Well, huh. But we've been taught that, hey, this is what police do. No, 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 no. You got a psycho with a freaking gun and a vague knowledge of English out there doing what he fucking pleases any damn time he wants to with a badge. Oh, but there's good cops. Blah, blah, blah. No, they're not. How how could they? You know, that's like saying, well, this glass of milk is only 10% spoiled. You know, the other 90%'s okay. I'll just no. If you got poison in your shit, you got poison in your shit. And somehow or another, whether you see it or not, it affects the rest of the shit. Oh, I better close this to see if anybody's in the chat. Say anything that may make a point. <laughs> well, we got, uh, oh, Jackson's barking. Oh, I've been there with Hannah. Maybe if you got it, if you got me on, on the speakers, you might have heard Hannah barking. <laughs> Just kidding. But, yeah, Hannah's got all about her defending the territory. I See, that's another thing is all that defending and uh, protecting shit. I got a dog for that. Oh, thank! You. I got the elixir too. Oh, my wife has got good timing. She knows me very well. Thanks, dear. But uh, <laughs> thanks, Vinny. I thought you were going. Oh man, I thought you were gonna go on. You want to come on the dork table? We'll try to hook you up. But I thought you were going to a concert today, and uh, I waited for you, but. I closed up my uh, wire. I'll open my wire if you want to call in. We'll we'll see if it'll work. If it don't work, I'm not going to drag Grim in to fix anything. But try to use the RLM1 if you do, because uh, I know that one handles the incoming calls better than the one-on-one -on -one does. And uh, there you go, Vince. You're welcome to the dork table if you want to come in here and give me some shit. Because I was talking shit about you, bitch. <laughs> now, I just think that... Uh, your quest for the honesty in life is as deep rooted as mine for the good time, you know. Uh, married to somebody I like is real important to me, you know. I, I'm not a Klingon where I've got to be around her all 24 hours a day. Oh, blah, blah, blah. But when she's not around, <laughs> then, I, then I'm hey, what time are you coming home? <laughs> so it's a it's a weird. It, it's a weird way for me to uh, to live in the lifestyle I've got because I came from a whole different world to come into the world I'm in. And I call this friction. When two ideas try to occupy the same exact spot at the same exact time, they, cr they clash. And that's where the anger and the confusion... Well, anger is one form of what I'm talking about confusion, uh, not being able to make a decision with what information you're looking at. Shit like that happens because shit's bumping into each other. It's colliding. And uh, that's how I see an argument. You know, we're, we're colliding mentally and it makes this uncomfortable waste. And then you start you raising your voice to be the one that's correct and, you know, Dominant. I spoke. Blah, 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 blah. Learned that from my dad. My father could look at me at a certain age, and man, that was it. And the older I got, the weaker that look got. So he had to find other tools to control me with. You know, so he went from the, the eye to the whip. <laughs> but uh, what I found out is people that we as life forms try to control and, and make them fit into the society that that exists, that's never going to work. It was never intended to work. If it was intended to work, when I had made that character out of that wood thing that I did on my own in school, I would have got some kind of a compliment for it, not a, wait a minute, you can't go off doing what you want with these tools, blah, blah, blah. Wait, you show me how to use the damn thing, and then when I use it, you're going to tell me, well, there wasn't anybody around, and you did it all by yourself, so you're wrong. Wow. So where's the learning? So I was confused. I went, you, you taught, because my dad would give me tools to, here, go do this. And I'd go do it. I would, using power tools was normal. Uh, drill impacts, you name it. Um, hand tools, Whatever it was, Pop made sure I knew how to use it and you know, give me a job to do. So when I got to that saw, I'd had a little experience with hand saws. Um, 
with a jig, not a jigsaw. I think I used a jigsaw. So when I used that table saw, it was no big deal. It was just a little more dangerous. And of course, you know, the state, they were starting to get uh, control of the kids by that period. It was 72, 73 era, right in there. When I started to really give up and lose interest in them is when they were squeezing me by the nuts, telling me everything I'm doing is against the rules. So, and if you tell somebody for 50 years, everything that they do is against the rules, this is what you get. <laughs> you get somebody that has the complete opposite outlook as 90% of the population. So what the internet did, it opened up a platform for people that think differently to find each other, I suppose is one way to put it. And there's a lot of people that know a lot of shit on this RLM. So just because I pick on one guy, doesn't do that's not knocking the site. That's just my way of saying that everybody's welcome. And, you know, if as long as you don't push the damn envelope off the table and get too stupid about your bantering, it's allowed. You know, it's tolerated. Uh, don't, don't do it for hours and hours and hours every day. You know, pick a little bit of time and, and then move on to something else. Get over it. But there's some people that, wow, we had a we had a person that pushed the, the admin around enough to get booted. And Vinny was all bent out of shape about it. Me, I, I don't know. I figure you bring on what you get. You know, I've been booted out of stuff. So I brought that on by my behavior or actions. And if I hadn't done those behaviors or actions, shit wouldn't happen. I would have been fine. But I didn't want to conform. So, here we are in this social platform, and everybody's got their own personal way of looking at, hey, this is okay to do, and that's okay to do, but this isn't okay to do. And I have that too. There's some things that, wow, they just rub me raw when somebody comes into a chat room and the first thing they do is insult the other gender. I find that really rude. You know, go all Hannibal Lecter. You've insulted my sense of taste. You know, and I want to chop you up and eat you with some fava beans, slow cooked over a spit for about three or four hours. <laughs> but no, I don't act out on it, but I think I'll cry some crazy shit when I'm insulted. Just like the guy that's insulting. <laughs> but the freedom of the internet is, you know, if I don't want to read it, all I got to do is type in a few short words on the little box down here of my keyboard and poof. All that shit goes away. But is that really how I want to live? <laughs> sometimes it is and sometimes it ain't. I use my own discretion. And I could be wrong. and But right and wrong does not weigh into my balance scale when I'm pissed. You know, that I'm not capable of making a clear decision in an angry mood. <laughs> That's when I... I think I read that when I was uh, studying up on these. Uh, I read this thing about emotions. Two emotions, period. And all the other emotions are within the boundaries of these two other emotions. You can't have this one emotion without the other two. That's how it's defined if I explain that properly. I'm trying to. And one of them is fear, and the other one is love. Love is defined as wide and the other fear is defined, is defined as narrow. So just logic tells you, you know, it's like using DSL or uh, what was that, old phone lines. You have a, a smaller delivery system for your information, so it's going to be slower, and you're going to be limited, and you're not going to get anything through the way you want it to. But the other one is wide and vast, and there's plenty of room, and you can put as much shit as you, as you can stand to in it. That's the love one. But People have been uh, just trained all fucking wrong about what the fucking word means in, in the beginning. You know, it's like, Cirque loves everybody, right? But she likes me. Ha, 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 ha. See? Because in the social world that we're from, the it should be spoken the other way around. I like everybody, but I only love you, honey. And me and Cirque, we communicate a, a little differently, and we kind of figured out, well, liking you is the big thing. Loving you, I can love a complete stranger for no fucking reason. Doesn't mean I want to talk to him, 
I might want to put their fire out or, you know, uh, whatever, help them off the ground if they fall. But that's not liking them in any way, shape, or form. That's being, that's loving when you help another person without expecting a result. But when, you know, when you're married and you live with each other and you don't like each other, whoa, then it's no fun. So you got to be there in our, in our reality, not everybody else's. That's what I say that whatever, whatever it is I believe is true, period. And doesn't matter what you say. And I think if everybody else had that same kind of a, you know, a, a road to walk down and see it from my perspective, they might not find it so, uh, unamusing <laughs> oh i think i got somebody hold on hark i hear bells you have reached the dork table for english press oh you got the radio you got it on turn it off yeah no turn it off kill it kill it Okay. Yeah, for Hey, good for you. For for English hit one now. <laughs> hey, I was giving you shit on I was giving you shit about yesterday. I wanted to talk to you about. It. I'm glad you called in. Yeah, you feel like talking about um, my side of yesterday? Cuz I said some pretty harsh shit to you on the on the chat room. I just wanted to clear it up on the, you know, on the radio. So you, you understand. Well, you were doing your show. Okay? And, right. And 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 uh well the 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 familiarity with the room is is the thing. You know, with the Bundy topic. Not that it's not true, not that it's not good. It's just people need variety, you know? And 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 I got to say this, if and I say it about me to you, so don't take it like this is some kind of rule or law. I'm just saying this is how I see this. If I want to do something on the radio and be taken seriously, I have to be serious to get that result from whoever I'm trying to reach with the words. You know, I have to go out of my way, like I tried to on 20% off, to not be so fucking around and clowning and insulting. I'm, I'm trying to be more... Uh, just calm and easy and make my point and go to the next point. <laughs> I get the I get the point. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. See, my my thing. Yeah. My thing is to just block you. If I can't can't stand listening to you, I stop. I, if I can't stand listening to somebody, I stop listening to them. I don't tell them, hey, you know. Well, hands I do because he posts Fox links and shit. But you, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you are, yeah, you are amusing yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, I'm not. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's not. He's he's my my system's not not getting you. Uh, so I've got you on here talking and and they can't hear you because yeah, I did a sound check before the show, but it's not it's not putting uh incoming on the on the radio. I thought it would work on the RLM one, but it didn't. You wanna you wanna call it a call it a day and we'll try this again Tuesday whoa yeah well you were going to be gone today and you weren't though but they're they're getting dead air time they're getting dead air space on the show when you're talking so there you go <laughs> yeah 
Well, right. But I don't know. Let me, I guess, uh, let me ask him. We can't, okay. Uh, I could say it too. Do you want to fix it? <laughs> I'm going to type it to him. Hold on. I'll just banter until we get something worked out or not because the time you're talking is dead air. So, because it's my system that's not working right. Uh, yeah, but th this is dead air time when you're talking. So, I, and, okay, there you go. And Well, and I'm asking him on the main feed in, in the RLM chat. But still, it's, it's, see, personal opinion, Vince. It's not about what you should or shouldn't do. I ain't fucking telling you nothing. I don't really care. Oh, Eve. I don't really care what you do. I care what you do to me. <laughs> it's not about... But what I am concerned with, this... Right, I told you the other night, Tuesday, I think. It, this is right now. It's not a big deal to people, to, you know, the people, the small people out here in the world. 20 years from now, this is going to be a fucking huge thing like Waco and Ruby Ridge and, you know, all these big political things that take place. But the government fucks with it for so many years so people will forget what happened so they can control what they learn about it from the past they control the narrative so the truth doesn't come out at the end now maybe because the, this is involving the internet this might be the one time where they can't weasel their way out of the bullshit and saying all that is because and this is why i'm concerned about the serious is you're leaving behind a historical document in a, in a sense, it, it's a new world that we're going to, you know, people are going to inherit this world from us. We inherited it from others. The sad part is the same families that were fucking it up when I was a little kid were the same families fucking it up when my grandfather was alive. Nothing. Oh, turn on. I forgot my team view. Give me a few more minutes, Vinny. I'll, I'll keep stalling. But, uh, you know, violence is... Such a common, I forgot, Grim, thanks. <laughs> but violence is such a common thread among us all because of the wars and police activity. And, uh, serial killers, I mean, crying out loud. They did all this, ser I thought I opened it, Grim, hold on. Uh, they did all these serial killers and this, that, and the other, and how many years? Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, just, it came up. I got a lot of shit open right now. I can't close everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just gave, I thought I gave Grim the, the team view. Hold on. It's open over here. Okay, it's asking for a, a connect. There we go. Oh, I get, there we go. N yeah, I get a little nervous when I'm trying to do a show and do all this other stuff. <clears throat> yeah, but Vin, <clears throat> yeah, but it's still, it's not about, it's not about telling you how to do it. It's more just suggesting. And I thought telling you why might help. Because in the long run, overall, this is huge. It's a lot bigger than than uh, what anybody in, in that we're doing singularly, and it's because you're a part of a bigger thing. You know, it's not just Vinny. <laughs> anyway, I don't say that you know you make it about you either, but you got. Let's see more into variety i do gotta say that much I, i'm just voicing my personal taste you're gonna do what you do but you know when you when you do stuff that other people try to do similar things to they tend to give you advice so if i'm giving you advice you either you take it or you don't my feelings are not involved in my advice at all you know if you want to do do it naked standing on top of your fucking house do you have fun but i'm just saying You'll get more. Uh, you'll get a better result bending to what society wants than you ever will trying to do things your own way. And I know it sounds pompous, but that's the way I see them do it to us. When you resist people, when they talk to you, what about their their topic or their demeanor or whatever they're doing is it that's making you resist in the first place? You know, a lot of the time, it's not the content, because average Joe wouldn't understand the content if you drew him a, a fucking diagram on his living room wall. He'd still be confused, because the, all the details of all this legal shit, the Admiralty Court, okay, there you go, right there, you lose 90% of your people right there talking about an Admiralty Court. They don't know there's a difference between the court and the Admiralty Court. It's the same fucking court, what are you talking about? 
No, it was hijacked. You can't hijack a card. You don't know what you're saying. Blah, 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 blah. And you get all that. And this is the dark table where darks talk like that. So there you go. And Grim's working on uh, hooking you up. I, I, I don't know what to say about my system. <laughs> I need new equipment. But in this crazy world that we live in, um, it's nice to uh, leave behind. Okay. What did he didn't? Okay. He's, he's not working now. He's still on. He's still got control of my computer, but he's it's coming. I'll let you know as soon as he's done. No, he's done. Give it a test, Vinny, and see if they hear you out yep. there in reallibertymedia.com. What? 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 Good morning, reallibertymedia.com. <laughs> yeah, well, I was giving you a lot of uh, kind of not insulting, <clears throat> but, you know, criticism. That's what I call it if it was me listening. But that's why I do this shit, you know, with people I know, because that's how I got where I'm at was by people pointing out the flaws in the way I was doing things that could eventually fuck my life up in ways that when you're 28 years old, you don't freaking get it. When I was 28, I wasn't planning to be here this long, see? So I wasn't willing to listen to a lot of shit, but some of the shit I listened to. And I don't know what in what it takes, you know, what, how somebody is drawn to what you're saying. What do you think well, it is? I, I'm going to tell you this. There's no, uh, oh. <laughs> there's no particular uh, demographic particularly that, uh, that I can find. <laughs> Uh, people that are that are in, so, oh God, I just gotta say that they're so deceived by this idea that uh, yeah, Trump Trump is a uh, a Christian that is there delivered by God to deliver these people. Uh, I just can't say enough. This guy is evil, but he's he's not a Christian. Uh, Cherry Roberts has uh, I don't know what her religion or lack of is, but. I, he has exhibits far more Christian um, principles and in, in, uh, how she expresses herself. Being on the opposite end of the spectrum that I am, you know, if you say left or right, I'm not all right, not all left, but. Right, um, yeah, I know that one, yeah. Me neither, is, yeah. Liberal an, about some shit, and I'm, I'm conservative about others. Yeah, so she's kind enough in, in her response with me. And she might not actually have the same response as others. It, these people that are detractors, I'll, I'll call them. I posted a thing about Facebook ban and, and, and my main guy there, Sky Reeve, uh, that people call trolls and to block all these guys. But I choose to interact with them because I have to make sure that uh, I'm not putting myself into a, a box, although I like the box I have. Um, I want to be able to see outside and <laughs> that was good uh -huh. but the bundy's issue here is important what am i doing i got another one and a half episodes in this series right here right that from the beginning after i started i said uh yeah i'm not going to be able to accomplish this is uh it's what i envisioned this one so i just went ahead and just started running uh, two topic but just throwing it in there it didn't make the outline so i kind of abandoned all that um and part of that is because of lack of experience, lack of uh, know-how, and just. But I do it anyways, and then I'm gonna pull it back together. <laughs> I always try to. Yeah. As far as all, all these other topics, they all interact and relate. Um, some issues that, like, uh, you know, Federal Reserve and uh, what what was that you just said there? Uh, people don't know about necessarily and then right. yeah, like we, how the irs tricks you into complying by giving you an application form to sign and if you don't sign that thing they can't do shit with you have, haven't you ever have you ever been the receiver of this phone call sir you didn't sign your check we can't cash this right hmm. huh why can't they cash the check without your signature if your signature is valueless then why won't they just write it in their self because it's fraud we the one thing that you own the one thing that you have that's got value that if people fuck with it they can be i mean the system will do something about it is your signature there you go yeah but, i gotta 
Lucy. I cannot do it. I will not do it. Why would I do it? Why, why would I be silenced out of criticism by anybody? Mm. Uh, this, I mean. Kind of the so, point of it in the first yeah. place, isn't it? There's, what? Well, when people start telling you, they get mad at you for doing what you're doing, and they start complaining, that's the point is, well, no. Th this is, yeah, I sir. see that side of him agreeing with you, Bonehead, is that yeah. if, if I'm like Cirque, I made up my fucking mind to do this, period. And the only one that's going to ever change my mind about doing this is me. Nobody else can tell me you can't be with Cirque. What are you, stupid? I'm going to be, you watch me. <laughs> so if you compare, I know it's a weird comparison, but if you compare that to your belief in putting the truth out there for people to see. As repetitively as you do, it doesn't bother me because I know how few people get it. So I'm not gonna, they're so few, I'm not, Vinny. I'm not gonna ban abandon. No, my, no, I see that. My operative. What? Let me think of the right word. But uh, I have tasks before me. It, this is over five years now that uh, yeah. events, however you want to call it, I like to call it proper vib vib vibration. <laughs> Wait, I'm not vibrating. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I was there, and this, as you say, this is a huge thing in history, and a lot of people don't know. No, they, what don't, it, they don't know. Uh, and this is not over. Listen, it's no. going to happen. They're coming for them, and then they're coming for you or somebody else. So if I would abandon my witness and testimony and continuing to push forward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, real truth because it's just such a small platform vince look hey vinny vinny it, it's because it's such a small platform and people just are familiar with you and and it that, that's all it's not about the point it, it's about the 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 detail you know this is like somebody pulling a piece of lint off your shirt this bothers me gink well now it's gone it don't bother you anymore huh a lot of people have have had influence on me in my life to yeah. You know, the, yeah. My, yeah. my actions bring me to who I am. Yeah. Did I tell you how I see this thing ending and why? Tell me. Violence is going to be the ultimate result. And the reason I believe this is because the system was hijacked by a foreign court, period. Admiralty court, you're submitting to them. When This is what I was saying about... Nobody found it necessary to shoot at each other at Bundy. Right. Okay. That was at Bundy. No, okay. But later on, when they were in Oregon, they killed that kid. All right. All right. He was all right, 30, fucking 30 years old, 40 years old. You're a fucking kid to me. Anyway. <laughs> uh oh, I just got an uh oh out of my wife. Anyway. No, it, I just, it's, way, it's the way I talk. But the point I'm trying to get to. When they commit the system, when the fucking the government assaulted that man and shot him dead, when you settled to deal with it in court, in my opinion, not everybody else's, this is how I see it, is uh, you gave you gave them the, the power to decide. So whatever in the end comes out of the court is going to be out of the court. It ain't going to have anything to do with truth. It's not going to have anything to do with the record. It's going to be, we say so. You backed off. You had your chance. Sorry. So, the only way, in my opinion, not everybody else's, Vinny. This is me. The only way I see this fucking uh, American problem ever being solved is the same fucking way it started. Somebody has got to draw blood and say, no, enough's enough. And that ain't going to happen. You know what? what? You know how... You could be, you know, how many people are so extreme on the right? And this one, this is what I'm very serious about here is peace. If we go to the Second Amendment and there's a lot of people that want war, and I say, what where, kind of where are you going to use your amendments? You're in Admiralty Court, they don't recognize the SCOTUS until you go to SCOTUS, or they don't recognize the Constitution in court until you go to the Supreme Court where it where it's at. Always do it, and then they and then they interpret it in these all of these fucking weird ways that don't even make sense. You know that one day that you could just wake up and then all of a sudden this event happened. And there's a lot of things happening right right now that are uh, polarizing people to such uh, degrees of opposition. 
and violence is what's going to result. And if you go to violence, that that is obviously not peace. Law, which is is uh, non-existent in the courts. It's yeah, become, right. That's what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's a game. Person has a, an assumption of some sort of protection when they're going into these systems, right? But in a true reality, it's like you're in a shark cage made out of gel or noodles, whatever, in the ocean of sharks. There it's a exception. So and you people, agree with me or do you disagree uh, with me? Absolutely, I agree. But the people going in there have this idea that there's supposed to be justice and it is not. It, right. It is, and and what I'm trying to tell you is no matter how many people you tell, no matter how many people hear the truth, this thing cannot be repaired by the truth because it's based on bullshit. So the only way you can fight bullshit is with a, a weapon. You, you got to get rid of it. You cannot fix bullshit. You can't live with bullshit. You have to remove it and eliminate it. And there's not anybody that's going to do anything close to that. It's going to stay the way it is forever. We're going to evolve ourselves and educate ourselves and govern ourselves right into complete fucking slavery. And all the stuff that you're talking is real and it's true. But my opinion is that it's never going to go anywhere because you don't have an audience to listen to you. So it's kind of like, wow. And it's not your fault. It's the, the way the system has trained the public to take new information in. If the government doesn't say it, man, there's nine out of ten people that aren't going to listen. So it's got to be violence or nothing. <laughs> That's what's coming, and it ain't stopping. I'm not a, a romantic dreamer, this girl, <laughs> but I'm going to speak against what's wrong. True, I don't, true, true. I don't care who likes it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not for the I, fucking I, violence, Vinny. I'm just facing the reality. I, yeah. Well, wait, wait. I'm just facing the reality that you know this is the same as a tumor. You know, and what people have been taught is to cut it out, not to use baking soda to cure it. No, no, no. It's too it's too big for that now. We can't we can't do that. We have to cut it out of you and radiate you and all this other outside shit. You can't fix this yourself. You're never gonna it's not gonna make a dent. That's what I'm saying. Not not that you're wrong or not that it's a waste of time or anything. No, no, no. I'm just yes. I'm just saying my my negative fucking outlook on this planet has led me to believe that these monkeys are so fucking ignorant that the only way you can get their attention is to slap them. You can't speak to them anymore. They're beyond understanding what you're fucking saying. It's horrible. Horrible. I was I was joking about this uh, on the 20% off. I played a link for Cirque as a little gag. I thought it would go for a, like a minute and she'd be bored. It was people being interviewed by, um, what's that guy, Jay Leno, asking them just questions, showing them pictures to identify, and they all couldn't do it. They're just hopeless. And then when they were wrong, they l had a nervous laugh, you know, like it was cute that they were wrong. Not Nobody ever took the time to teach them these things. It's that they were stupid. And I was kind of insulted by it, but still laughed. It was still funny, but on another level, you know, I'm thinking, wow, that's kind of fucked up to not teach a whole generation of people all these things and then mock them for not knowing it later. Well, I can tell you that uh, I have no hope of being accepted and uh, because, like I said, I'm not received for, from both sides in the extreme, but I do have people that. I would say like Captain Carl uh, Koenig. Uh, there's people that have huge amounts of weapons in com combination that they could put up a hell of a war. Don't think that uh, the that uh, it, it'll be a, a a sure sure thing win for the for the feds. A, a civil war is not going to be good, and this is very serious. This is this is where we're where we're going. Uh, this is my prediction. If I was a, a soothsayer, and we're probably not going to stop it. And then no, we're, no, no. Can't be stopped. What if this, what if this uh, revolution, civil war thing uh, came into fruition? And then you've got people in charge that are so extreme on one side. You know, they want to kill the fags and all this and that or whatever. Is this the kind of world you want to live in? Kill the, kill the male. You know, what Matt Shea was saying in this 
conversation. What's going uh, on anyway, Vince? Doesn't matter. the The laws are being written to to do the things that are being done. That they're telling you to worry about. Wait a minute. Let me finish. That they're the system tells you to to worry about happening has already happened. It's a, we're we're in the shit now. We've been in the shit for forty, fifty years. There there's nothing nothing's going to happen. It's been done to us already. Now there's a few people that finally get internet and go, Oh, hey, wait, what is this? This isn't right. So you got ten percent of the population with a little bit of knowledge. It's not gonna change the game. The game needs to be removed. How are you gonna do that? How the fuck are six million Danes going to just, uh, we don't got a queen anymore. What do we got? Because that's the conditioning of people. Not our fault. Now, me and you might not fall into those groups, but we know people that do. And it's not a good or a bad thing. It's an is thing. Well, what, what other people will say, well, reality does exist it, no it's all a matter of your subjection it's you looking at that and if you don't take that seriously who am i to force you to see it the way i see it i, I don't think it works that way oh grim gave me something to read so go ahead and take the mic for a minute and when you're finished i'll read something all right and i got something from uh, anti to catch up to i have to go back uh, um yeah so let me let me talk about them while you're reading so what what are we what are we looking at here? This occupation, we're we're under these rules that uh, apply on us that we don't really have uh, opportunity to say, well, no, no. And then you get people say, yeah, this is what we'll do. We'll we'll bring it to issue and take it to court, and then all of a sudden it will make it all right. And then they get in there and they find out that's not what the courts are about. Not- <laughs> that's what I've been saying. Maybe yeah. maybe see so what that, happens. That's the point. Oh, and- the- Okay. All right. So then what happens? Then you get people that are trying to uh, another path. They're looking for this path to peace. And then they go through with violence and, and it perpetuates. And I just can't say enough about that. <laughs> I know. I know. People it's think ridiculous. we're going to have this, this grand revolution and uh, everything's going to be right and they're all deceived. And whether it be from left commie or whatever the far right is that you're on the title or whatever there's a <laughs> little ground for peace where we cannot occupy the same ground in the ideology of peace that's where we can walk separately you know religion for example there's going to be conflict Vinny. Somebody, I don't, don't, why don't you... one wants to be a jew and one wants to be a this one fine but <laughs> if you're, if you're going to take your rule of your religion and then apply it to me or someone else um for, for let's say no, the Islam, for example, of the uh, the burqa or whatever. Um, I mean, how free is that? What what is free? Free is the ability to make uh, your own choice in course of action, and, and as long as that does not conflict with another's same course of peace, then that's where you go and pass by. You don't have to be in agreement with everybody here. I'm gonna tell you, I'm certainly not. Uh, in any like cast of accord here uh, at Real Liberty Media or anywhere else for that matter. So I am who I am, and uh, I have a a beacon and a uh, and I use some people as as guides. I use other as others as a light tower on this journey that that I'm about. And I see the, all these buoys bobbing up and down and <laughs> and the ocean. Yep. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And what does it really mean? It's just the gurbly goop, you know, when they're submerged in the water. And but it works, Vince. Over there are noodles. Well, it, it works on some people, uh, it, most people. That, Almost there everybody. you go. 90 fucking percent. Let me read this for Grim. I'll be one second. It's just short. And then I'll give you back the mic, huh? We're at the end. We only got like 10 minutes left. So this is like four sentences. Ready? Uh-huh. Okay. This is for a grim nerd. (laughs) I wonder if I should do it in a voice. Ah. When you try your hardest not to be a fucker, but everyone you deal with is a fucker, so you end up being a bigger fucker just to outfuck the fuckers. That's me. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Right, exactly. He caught you. 
I mean, no. not all of us, not all I, of us see you the same way either, Vince. I mean, that's the point of that individual shit. Is I see things that other people see in you, and I see things other people don't see in you, because we're individual. There you go. We're not a group think group around here. I'm not under the any kind of idea that you're trying to make me see things your way either. By the by the way, I just think you're telling me what you found out that most people don't know. And it's a hard I, it's a hard topic and sometimes your style is a little bizarre. It's like me, I, but I'm I'm not trying to be serious all the time. And when I am trying to be serious, I still fuck off a little bit just for balance. <laughs> Yeah, mostly uh, almost every day I'm going to talk to somebody about how they all affect us in our everyday lives. Um, I'll be uh, in <clears throat> sorry Labor Day this year. I will be in uh, at the the chuck wagon races. I'm going to be live streaming it, I think, and uh, doing video. Uh, this guy Dan Oaf and his wife they got a, a nice ranch feed store. She's got a furnace, but anyways. They've been having this chuck wagon races going on for a long time out here. And, uh, oh, Dan built a, a pond. Well, along comes the government. And you know what would have happened to him if he didn't uh, acquiesce? At, and I won't go into the, all, the, all the details, but he had ended up like Joe Robinson up in, uh, in, in Montana that went to prison. He's dead now. But they, they come and all this stuff touches together. They've got laws here. you got to have a fence on the creek to keep the cows out. Nobody does it. And they're not going to come in here and try to apply that or crack it down on just yet because there's, they know that there'd be so much. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about for months and months is this preemptive game against the society with law to trap them in shit that is so – it's nonsense. It's not even fucking real. They just tell a story wrong and morons go, hey, the government said so. Let's fuck these people up. And it's coming. You know, somebody here local, and they go, "Wow, you know," and they know what I've been doing and know about the what happened there in, in the Nevada. Mm -hmm. and that gives me uh, plenty of accreditation. That uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let me end the show with this one. There's there's a guy here that he's a is that guy that burns the Koran a political activist or is he in politics circle? The guy that burns the Koran in Copenhagen. Huh? Okay, so they've got a sitting politician in politics that goes out in the public. I've told you guys this a few times. But what I didn't know, <laughs> I found out the other day, he, he had a, written a story or somebody wrote a story about him. And he's predicting Denmark will be uh, predominantly Muslim by 2040. <laughs> And I, I'm looking around here, and I'm telling you, there's some days I don't see a brown face. Yeah, but there's you're not in the concentrated area then, say. Well, and that, but, 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 this is like uh, everywhere else where the the big places, this is Denmark. The, there's only a couple, what, Copenhagen and what else has got a big population? There's not a lot of big cities in this country. Most of the pe people are spread out. It's a small place. It's a, lot, it's a lot of small cells that make up a big cell. Take you, take you a can of pepper and open it up and pour it in a pile. And then stop and look at it. And you'll see like you got a pile right there and all out around the periphery. You're going to have little speckles. And so that's, that's kind of how the concentration works. You can't have a 10% or a 90% spoiled milk. Uh, oh, yeah. I said that at the, show, the beginning today. <laughs> the whole yeah. batch is going to be spoiled. Yeah. My, yeah. Oh, people shouldn't be... I, I'm type that's like libertarian and idea that, you know, open borders, but, you know, right to travel. You can go where you want it and uh, otherwise. But why are people coming here? It's all that's the trick right there. That's because of the governments. How else and would you know how to get anywhere if it wasn't a yeah. for just human destruction? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'd like to say in a perfect world, uh, you could go wherever you want it. But that's that's not the truth of it, is it? Well, no, it okay, it's possible if you uh if you play by the rules like I did. If I had gone against the rules, I don't know where I'd be right now. But there's so many things that I couldn't have done without a passport that I wanted to have the passport in case I wanted to ever do them like go out on a boat. You can't you can't 
do uh, I'm talking ocean. You can't go out into a sea or an ocean on a boat without having uh, a stamp on your passport because if, if you get stopped by whoever out in the ocean, whatever authority there is, and you don't have your passport stamped, you're going to prison. It's yes. it's punishable by whatever the court that owns that bit of water you're sitting in is. So you could end up in a foreign prison because, hey, you stowed away on a freaking boat. Could have been up to anything. So that's something there where most countries will put them in prison, but uh, that people would come here illegally. And uh, You know what I noticed, though? Story in it. Most people are on the land, and there's not a lot of people on the water. You know what else I noticed? What? 75% of the world is water. 25 yeah. is land. So, 25% is land. How many, how many, uh, well, if I say sharks, that, that would be a good way to put it. But <laughs> how many sharks live on the land that you know of? So you can't say lawyers, politicians. No. <laughs> you live in them, but you live where the, what about all the, the actual land mass on the, People can't live all over it really well. Can't explore it, yeah, or you can't use it, like the North Pole, the South Pole, blah, 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 blah. If there is even, see, I've never seen these places. They might not even exist for all I know. Because, you know, when you think about shit like this, it's going to sound probably goofy to you, but Freddie Mercury was born in Persia. You know, know. What, you know what Persia is? It's not Arab. Modern day Iran is what was once Persia, okay? Now, here we are, what, 60, 70 years later? I forget how many years ago they put the Shah of Iran in there. But they all these years later, now Iran is some great enemy of ours. And okay. Americans used to marvel at the quality of the Persian rug. The Persian rug was a freaking miracle because they were perfect except for one spot on the rug. And it was a religious belief that only their God made anything perfect perfect so they made one flaw on their persian rug to you know maintain their humanity or whatever according to their freaking religion but now here we are in 2019 and americans blindly let's attack iran those fuckers are evil why what have the iranians ever done to you do you even know where iran is on a fucking map do you know anybody that's Iranian? I do. I've met a few Iranians in my life. And the one common link I have with the few I've met, they all treated me just fine with a big Jew nose and an American accent. They never treated me badly because of that. Explain it. Huh? I, huh? Huh? It's the end of the show anyway. You want to do the... Uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll give the yeah. Let me close it out. Well, no. thanks for coming in and and uh, killing the second half of the dork table with me. We were dorking today too. Let's beat that dead horse until people are in a fucking revolution and they didn't see it coming because they wouldn't listen. And that's what it is. And it's not the RLM. And it it's the the them out there in the fucking real world that don't give a shit about what we're talking about. They're the problem, not us. <laughs> Uh, At least we'll know it's going to happen. Thank you. Thanks. We all have our part to play in this life that we exist in together. (laughs) (laughs) I think so. Yeah, this is the reality. So we're doing something. We may we may not all share the the same uh, goals and desires, but really and truly, we all do, and that breaks down the. We all want to uh, live and have uh, peace. So that's that's what we pursue. There's uh, other outlets and channels. Uh, we've we've got Grammy Mary. Got, man, if you're in if you're in the dumps, you can't not be at the end of this. <laughs> I know. We have a little bit of something here, and everybody has their own little bit of something to add here at Real Liberty Media. And we'd sure like to see more folks come along. That's uh, going to be part of my next project uh, in interim here the summer is to uh, uh, start making some more connections like I did in old days and uh, I'd like to see more people here but uh, anyways this is uh, we've been dorking here with uh, Mr. Flash somebody and he's across the waves and I waving at my friend over there now Sunday is uh, the big day right here uh, at Real Liberty Media 
We've got, well, we're going to warm up in, in our minds and our fingers with some trivia at about a quarter to 12 in the Eastern time zone. Uh, Grimner starts early, so come about a quarter to noon to listen to uh, Grimner get it all tuned up and playing some blues for about three hours and uh, practicing your finger punching on the keyboard for the trivia. And then 3 o'clock Eastern comes Hal Anthony from behind the woodshed. There's not anybody more important that you need to listen to and sort through because this doesn't make sense to everybody because they're so used to hearing what they think they want to know. Thank you, Grim. Um, I agree. Well, yeah. All right. So we're we're back at the woodshed and then comes back Monday. Grimner has leftovers. And <laughs> pretty good. If you'll just come on over at 7 o'clock Monday night on Eastern time and get you some because they're yum, yum. Yeah, Tuesday, bring, bring a fork. Uh, world with Flash, somebody, and me most sometimes, but this time I won't be headed to T Town tomorrow and I ought to be back Tuesday or Wednesday. And uh, then, Wednesday, speaking of, there's Grammy Mary uh, blasting off in the rocket chair. Thursday is 20% off. What a deal. Flash, somebody, again, at uh, it, that's, uh, time is 2 Eastern. Yes, two Eastern, and then Friday, noon Central, Wander Gander with uh, one of the many Vinnies that uh, you'll find right here at Real Liberty Media. That's me. And six is Grammy. Oh, I'm back to Central Time for another blast off. And ten Eastern is going to be. Is Moosey going to be here? Is it going to be a Freakers Ball, y'all, or will it be Balls to the Wall? Ha ha ha. Ten o'clock. Eastern, no, Central. Then again, back here on another Saturday with you. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for coming in and helping me with the show tonight. Or t well, my night. It's all still sunny. It's beautiful out today. Uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging in there on the reallibertymedia.com chat. And uh, especially, oh, yeah, hey, but especially my wife circle. <laughs> my number one fan. Yeah, she's awesome. So thanks a lot, Vince. Anything else to close this up with? Yeah, let me just say a couple words here. It is very important that we do fight for what's right. Uh, sometimes we get lost in the fight. And the fight is not for violence, but the fight is for peace. So I'm not real good all the times about exhibiting that when I get confrontation. And I do that, whether it be in the chat or in physical uh, proximity. So, uh, fight, just fight right though, and try to set the rules and boundaries because those are important, uh, if we're to get along. Um, yeah, I, I got a lot to work on and we probably never, never will get it accomplished, but that's the way it is. So thanks everybody. Appreciate you. Grim. You're, you're great and mighty. See you next week, everybody.